The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome. We back for one more show of the table topics, and today uh, we have John, and we have a guest, Amy Blanchett. Everybody knows Amy. Everybody knows John. Nobody knows me. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> I think Amy's probably the most popular one, Carlos. <laughs> so let me start by saying this: How? Um, we're going to do our show today is I have a few questions that I would like to have a yes, no, and then we can talk about. Do you agree? John? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to talk about how our country is divided. Okay. All right. Am I going to get ganged up on today? No, no, no. But he is the example. He is the perfect example. We are three friends. Yeah. We know each other for a long time. And we're going to take our friendship um, as an example. Okay. Here, I start by one side of your screen, me. I am an independent that thinks more liberal. So... I voted for Biden. On the center, we have Amy, a Democrat, that supports the burn. And then we have John. All right. Conservative. Not well, that I, that I, vote I, that I, put I'm an, Trump. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an independent. So I don't <laughs> Me I don't too. Come, I don't Me go too. with what party. I, I mean, I, I'll go with who I think is going to do a good job. Um, yeah. So, so I'm not really a Republican. Yeah, I'm probably more on the conservative side. But as you get older, everybody becomes more conservative. Um, you know, so. But go ahead. So. Clarify that. Um, with that clar clarified, uh, we probably have different opinions about what's going on today at this time yeah. with. Um, With the uh, at the uh, at the, uh, our country, with Trump trying to people trying to blame Trump for stuff that people say that he's guilty and people say that he's not guilty. Um, but one question is: Did you agree with all the policies from your favorite candidates, John? Yes. Did I agree with every, I don't agree with anybody on every policy. I'm sure there's something that I didn't agree with. I, I agreed with the majority of his policies though. Okay. Amy. Yes. Did you agree with every policy that your, uh, um, your favorite candidate was uh, proposing? Bernie. Um, and just, I just want to say, I, um, more of an independent, independent democratic socialist, but um, just about everything. There was maybe one or two things I didn't agree with him on, but yeah, pretty much everything. He was right in line with what I think and how I feel. Hmm. Well, I, I either didn't agree with everything that my candidate was proposing. So, uh, you think that what's going on right now is um, constitutional or not? Uh, who me? Yes. No, no, I don't. I don't think it's constitutional. He's not in office anymore. This is just a big show. Is all this is? If you listen to it, it's a trial. I've been listening to some of it. Um, yes, I understand everything that happened, but you know you can't. 
say that you people did that. I mean, people, uh, if someone tells you to jump off the bridge, are you going to jump off a bridge? People did things on their own. But I mean, that's regardless of this. This is unconstitutional. This is basically to let him not to make not have him have the ability to run again. That's all this is about. And to just continue. My, my feeling is we have so many things going on in this country, but we have a week or two to just sit there and go through a trial, which is going to come out. They already know he's probably not going to be found guilty. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's only more divisive. That's my own opinion. But Thank uh, thank <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Yes, I do think it's constitutional. I absolutely do. Uh, you, you know, I, I appreciate your opinion, John, but it wasn't just that one isolated incident where he was like, go to the Capitol. You know, it was over the course. I was just watching court TV all day today and I was watching the trial. It wasn't just one isolated incident. He's been he'd been egging them on on Twitter and, and, and various social media outlets for for weeks, months even. You know, they had very detailed plans. This wasn't something that was just spur of the moment. This was planned. This was thought out, you know. Um, so, yeah, I absolutely do think it's constitutional, and I absolutely do think it's necessary. We should not ever have a president be able to run again who, who pulled something like that. I mean, people died. This was, this was a very serious situation it's not something to be taken lightly our, our capital was destroyed so much history in there and it just breaks my heart i can't watch those videos and not be sad or upset about it or, or very angry you know yeah well yeah he is well, let me let he me is ask, my let me ask amy both you and carlos this question so are you both against violence any kind of violence i i condemn what happened at the capitol building that was that that shouldn't have happened but, I am absolutely okay. okay. So there were people that have been their businesses have been destroyed all summer long. People have been murdered, mm -hmm. and you very rarely, if any time, heard somebody that was liberal or a Democrat condemn that. You no. very rarely heard them condemn that violence. I, 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 you know, we keep getting this argument about the Black Lives Matter protesters, but fact it's of the not, matter is this: we not, had. Amy, it's not all Black Lives Matter. This is Antifa, who has destroyed buildings. They're still demonstrating and destroying businesses out in Portland, Oregon. So it's not but, just that. But who is Antifa, really? Because it's been found that there's been white nationalist groups at these protests destroying things and inciting violence. So is it Antifa that's, that people keep saying, or is it these white nationalist groups that are there? Well, let me say this. During the debates couple of times, the candidates would ask for them to condemn Antifa. Joe Biden did. More than once. Oh, really? I never Trump heard. never did. Trump, Trump, matter of fact, went so far to say, what do you want me to say? You tell me what I want to say. What can I say? That's how far you went. He never condemned them. Never. Stand and, back and, and stand down. That the, the debate, it's there. So now that Joe Biden is there, everybody says he's not condemning. He did during the debate when he, he was not even a president. But it was just to, to, uh, to clarify that. Now, constitutional or not is the question. And until I have that question answered, until we have that question answered, should not be what's going on right now first we need to know if it's or not yeah, because I, I, if it is I, if it is now we have a case if it's not we don't have a case yeah it, right it, it says a president a president is the president that's in office now that's that's my feeling with this my thing is the democrats won okay <clears throat> the progressives won so what get their agenda out there i don't understand why they feel that they have to impeach a president that's not there it, it, it's but it's only going to be more divisive in this country if you continue this the, the but you United want me to uh, uh yes. john i can tell you the truth yes. i think that the republicans are the ones that want to impeach him okay not the ones voting not the ones voting the ones out they want because they don't want this. They don't want him again 
vote, uh, uh, running for president on that party. That's why it was, was a word out there that he was going to form his own party. Because the Republican Party don't want a chance for him to run again because then he's going to kill the rest that's left from the, the Republican Party. That's my opinion. Well, the Republican Party was pretty much dead prior to the last four years. I mean, a Republican president had it once since Bush. So the Republican Party is exactly the same as the Democrat Party. <laughs> if you ask me, they're both the same. They just, you know, I mean, we'll go with different things. But yeah, that, that's that's my feeling with it. You know what I mean? It's they're yeah. both the same. They're both the same. You know, I'll give you that. Democrat and Republican are, are very much the same. At this point. Both the so, same. Amy, I mean, Amy, let me ask you something with this. Look at what happened with Bernie Sanders. They stole the election from him twice. And I'm forever heartbroken and I will never get over it. And he let it go. You know what I mean? I, my thing is, one of the debates, I kind of thought it was kind of interesting with Bernie that I was like, you know what? I think you're selling your people out because basically he, they were asking about his three homes. And he's saying, what? People don't have three homes. I have a house in Vermont. I have a summer house in Vermont. And I have a house in Washington. It's like, dude, very few people own three houses. So if you're a socialist for the people, I don't think having three houses is helping your cause. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, if you have to go back and forth to Washington, would you rather that your legislator, uh, you know, have, have, have a home to go right. to or that I, he's paying excessive money, you know, for hotels? And, I don't, and I don't have a there. problem. I don't have a problem owning a house in Washington. I do have a problem with you owning a summer house, a million dollar summer house on Lake Champlain or wherever it is. You can't pretend to be, you know, for the people. And then you get very upset when people question you about owning a summer house. That's a little ironic to me. <laughs> but he, he is for the people, though. I mean, he just raised like $4 million, you know, for, for the state of Maine for Meals on Wheels and, and food security. You know, he could have kept that money. He put it uh, in Amy, what's, Amy, what's that, Amy, what's that compare with the president giving up his salary? Come on, that's... That's penance. Don't, you know, don't even mention that because Trump, come on, when it comes to give money away, oh, Trump, it's all the way there. But um, judge just look at me, Carl is going to get from me today. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, one, one, one thing on, um, on Bernie, though, is he, he is for the people because he ran for office twice and, and, and lost. And still, he's one of the only people sitting there saying, we need this and we need this now for our people. He's one of the only people that has continuously, every single day, fought for us, no matter what. Amy, you didn't think he sold out during the first election. He should have gone after them and that party. He knew what they did. And the second election, you think Joe Biden beat, uh, beat Bernie Sanders? <laughs> well... I don't. I was at the rally in Boston. I don't. I, I don't. That's why I don't associate with being a Democrat. I don't agree with their their whole process at all. Yeah. All right. I, um, I think we can agree John. on that because, again, the parties are the same. <laughs> John. Yeah. Yes. Why not a third party? Um, I, I'd rather see many parties. A lot of different countries have more than two parties. Why not we have a party that looks out for everybody's interests? If you have an interest in this, why can't you have a party, you know, your own specific party? I, I'd like to see more than two, more than three, more than four, you know. Well, Every, there's so go, many go, different... go to Portugal, you have 16. Well, I wouldn't have a problem with that because <laughs> people would see that someone's fighting for their interest, you know, for <laughs> things that they believe in. And, you know, I don't think we get that now. I, I mean, you know. It's saying Trump is a Republican is, is the, the guy was pretty liberal all his life, was in liberal, um, you know, areas and, you know, with people kind of, you know, intermingling. So he's not really a Republican or a conservative from my my feeling, you know, I think that's what we have. The problem is the candidates are not really running for what they believe. They're running with, with the party that can get them elected. Yep. That's the problem. That's why we divided, because Trump uh, uh, runs 
thinking one way and burning run thinking another way and, 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 and nobody's getting anywhere because you're really not telling the truth what you believe are and what you're going to do when you get elected. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's why we so divided because if, if, if we all believe on the same thing, it's no reason for a party to be divided. We all want the same thing. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I, <laughs> but I don't yes. think everybody in America wants the same thing. You know what I mean? There are things I'm sure that both you guys want that I don't think, you know what I mean, I would want. You know, there, mm -hmm. there are just certain things. People have different beliefs about different things. Um, my issue is like we have a $27 trillion debt. Who's going to pay for this? Who mm -hmm. is going to pay for this? It, it's it, it probably in our lifetime, you know, if they come in and say, hey, the game's over, <laughs> you know, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people, you know. Well, I, I, I somebody told me that um, that's the last thing they think about. It's paying back because never going to be paid back. We're just going to keep printing because we print our money. So we're just going to keep printing. Forget about how much you already printed. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, the, you know. We've seen what happens in other countries when people lose confidence in the money. What happens? Mm -hmm. We've seen it. Yeah. Argentina. We've seen so many different countries, Venezuela, uh, Zimbabwe, you know, that when people lose confidence in, in their money, that's what happens. But hey, mm -hmm. we'll see. Amy's kind of quiet. So, Amy, let's bring Amy, up. Amy, let's uh, uh, a third party. What do you think? Well, what do you for think me, about? I I say, um, what about all these uh, trillionaire billionaires like Bezos? What are we doing about them? What are we doing about their tax bracket? Why are they allowed to continually, to pro continually profit in the millions and billions every year not and, and, and get tax breaks, not pay their employees a livable wage? You know, why aren't we attacking that? I agree with you. I, that's I'm not, See, look at this, Amy. There's another thing I agree with you. Why does, <laughs> why does, he, why does he get a free pass? Um, why does Facebook get a free pass? Right. You know, Twitter, why is he getting a free pass with these things? Uh, it's, you know, yeah, I, no, I agree. I agree. Um, and, the, and, and the funny thing is, guess what? Like I started the show. We are three different people, but we all want the same. We may not agree with each other all the time, but we just want the same thing. We want a good country, you know, a country to, to, uh, to treat everybody the same and, and, you know, and move on. Yeah. That's what we want. doesn't matter what party we belong. That's what we all want as Americans. Yeah. That's all we want. Well, I, I have to say with, and I've talked to a few people about this, with, and I listen to financial people. This is the first time in my whole life that I've heard people say that they wanted to leave the country. And I'm not talking, this has nothing to do politically. This is just that they this is not the country that people are brought up in um, and they just don't feel secure in here anymore. They don't feel safe with the economy, with all the, um, you know, violence that we had over the weekend, the violence at the Capitol building. People don't feel it's the same country that they grew up in. And I hear that a lot where there's videos out there. Where can I live on a thousand dollars a day uh, a month? What country can I live on a thousand dollars a month and <laughs> safe, you know? And I can send my kids to school in safety. And I think that's really a really sad state of affairs for America, you know. It um, is sad because instead we should be working on the issues. Yeah. You know, if, if everybody was making a livable wage, we wouldn't have half the problems that we have now. The economy would be booming. People would actually have money to go out and like buy necessities. You know, I mean, if if Poor people don't have money. They're not. They're not spending money. And those are the people who spend money because the millionaires are not. They're just profiting. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, you're right. I mean, they're they're not um, spending at the. You know, they they have more disposable income. So yeah, granted, they're where the people are the ones that are spending it. Um, so I agree with you there, Amy. See this, Amy. This like three or four things right there. <laughs> they're keeping their money and they're sending it overseas and they're not being taxed on it and they're continuing to profit. And we, the people, down on the very bottom, point the truth consistently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so what do you, let me ask you this then. What do you think then, do you, do you believe, and like now what's happening is we're having people coming at the southern border again. 
and they're, and they're saying they're not being tested with COVID. So when you bring more people into a country, does that not, the whole supply and demand of jobs, if you bring more people in, the wages are going to go down as opposed to if you have less influx of people coming into an area, you're going to have a higher um, level in, of income. And I think we, over the last four years, we had a, a, the increase of income of like four or $5,000. I mean, is that associated to the um, slower immigration or? Um, I don't really think so. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, people think, you know, when you come into this country as an immigrant, that it's easy. It's not. My ex-husband was an immigrant when he came into this country. And when we got married and he had, he needed to get his, his green card, it was a very lengthy process and it was expensive. Yeah. Um, and he did, he wasn't allowed to have health insurance because uh, he didn't have a social security number yet. We had to work on getting that. And, um, you know, you're not allowed to apply for food stamps or anything like that. So for me, it's crazy when people talk about immigrants and how immigrants are taking everything. No, they're not. They're not taking everything from our country. Yeah. Um, it, it's very hard to get the things that a lot of these people speak of. It, you know, nothing is for free in this country. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to, you know, a lot of these immigrants come in and they're trying to find uh, work under the table just so they can make enough money so they can apply to get their green card or their citizenship. But I'm, not, I'm not coming from an emotional standpoint. I'm talking about if you bring more people into a country or you bring more people, if we got 10,000 people in Fall River right now, you just put 10,000 more people in Fall River. Is that going to help the environment, the work environment for the people that are already here? The other 90,000 people, you're going to have 10,000 more people competing with the 90,000 people that are here that are struggling. So at this time, you know, no, it's, it's probably not a good idea. I mean, I'm still looking for a job, you know. So, so yeah, it's, it's, as far as, as jobs are concerned. Yeah, it's, it's not a great time. Not with not with COVID. Yeah. Um, and especially them not being tested. Everybody should be tested. That's coming over this border. Everybody. Yeah. 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 I, I, I do agree. But. Um, it's one more thing that I would like to touch um, uh, on our show today is something that I heard on the news this morning and that really bothered me was the fact that this game, they didn't had to sing the anthem at the beginning of the game. And I think it's wrong. You know, our anthem, it's our anthem. Our anthem. American flag should be in every classroom, should be in every house, should be everywhere. That's where you are. That's who you are. Period. If, if you don't like the American flag, go back to the country that you came from. You don't belong here. If you don't, if you don't like our anthem, too bad. That's our anthem. That's what we have. Until we change it, and, and everybody agrees to change it, that's what we have. So I had the problem when uh, this famous actor had to go after a president. You don't even learn, you know, number one, you speak English like me, broken English. That tells me that you are not even born in here, okay? Number two, if you don't like it here, go back. Number three, the only reason you're here is because you make millions of dollars. Okay? And I don't even know how you got an easy pass to come here just because you are an actor. Okay? So I do have a big problem when they are pushing aside our, our, our things as, as uh, our anthem. John. Uh, oh, let, let me let Amy talk. Go, let, go, let Amy go because you kind of... Uh... I'm going to say this. Yeah. The Pledge of Allegiance says... Um, one nation under God, liberty and justice for all, right? Yep. Yes. So if you are, are coming into this country and you expect liberty and justice for all and fair treatment and equity that we preach all the time, mm -hmm. and you see what's happening in this country right now where tons of protesters that protesters Black Lives Matter are arrested and tear gas when they were not even doing anything. They were, the vast majority of them were non-violent. And then you see what happens on the Capitol and you see a bunch of white people storming the Capitol, kill, killing a cop, killing people, threatening lives, destroying property. And they get a slap on the hand and they're sent back home. 
They're, they've all been, Amy, Amy, a lot of them have been arrested. The guy that has the horns is going to probably go to jail for 30 years. So these some, people, well, well, he should go to jail longer than that. But some of them have already been sent back home and they're, you know, just on probation or whatever. It's a slap on the hand. Well, some of these people were armed. But we have black, black unarmed people in this country being shot. You know, so some of these people, when they're protesting, you know, this, this is what they're saying. And it's not that they don't love this country. It's that they love it enough to bring us back to with liberty and justice for all. So when we talk about all, who is all in this country? Everybody. It should be. Yeah, but it, it, now it it's is not. everybody. It is everybody. But because because uh, an accident that somebody, a police officer, which is charged for murder, uh, killed somebody, we should not change the anthem because I'm of not, that. No, I'm not saying to change it. I'm not saying to change it, but it's going to hit you a different way. If your son or your mother was shot by the police and was unarmed and, you know, the police just happened to walk into an apartment had nothing to do with them and shot the person dead. Look at Breonna Taylor. If you're Breonna Taylor's mom, do you feel the national anthem right now? Well, that's the way I feel. If a cop stops me for speeding, I'm not going to tell him, go after him. He was driving faster than me because I was behind him. No, it was me. I got caught, not him. He, and he was driving faster than me. So every case, it's different. And they can, and pr probably, the, probably you were not even stopping him, but he stopped me. So I need to take the responsibility for me. That's who he caught. He got, he got me. So that's what I'm thinking is because one person got killed, that doesn't mean all the cops are killers. That doesn't mean that all, all the black people is going to be killed. You know what I'm saying? Things happen. Oh, I know. And I agree, they should not. They should not happen. But as long as the people get, you know, uh, get caught and the people had, and the people pay for the mistake, there's nothing else we can do. We cannot change the whole country because of one person. Uh, 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 John, yes. you're too quiet. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, I, I understand where Amy's coming from. I totally get where Amy's coming from, but I, I think I think whenever you see something that happens, you know, I, I like to read more than one publication because everybody now, any of the news, you know, they have this this spin on it. It's gone to the days of Walter Cronkite where they would tell you, you know, Amy rocked down the street, somebody tripped Amy, and this is what the person's name is. Now it's like you know, Amy was walking down the street. She shouldn't have been there in the first place or something stupid. <laughs> yeah. But everybody yeah. puts their own opinion into it. Yeah. So until we can... An emotion. Thinking, An yeah. emotion. That's with yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's, until we can kind of get exactly what happened um, in cases, I, I don't think it's going to help. I don't think the media helps in this situation at all either. Playing videos over... 20 million times in a matter of a week, that doesn't help anything at all. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't help anything. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, we all, we want to look at things. I want to put myself in everyone's shoes. I, you know, I'll put myself into the shoes of that uh, Brianna Taylor's mother. I'd be heartbroken if my kid was killed. I don't care who mm -hmm. killed him, whether it was a cop or, a, or somebody was homeless or whatever. I don't care who it was. I'd be heartbroken. And of course you're going to be upset about certain things, but I, I think we got to put things um, into into perspective with some of these things. But Amy, I agree. I understand where you're coming from. How people think that they mm -hmm. don't um, want to stand for the national anthem. Um, but I think instead of instead of doing that, there there, there are probably other ways that you know what I mean can be utilized. You know, or could be done. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's yeah. that's just my feeling. Yeah. And believe me, I have a lot of friends, that, uh, black friends. I, you know, I was criticized because I put one on on our board, and Amy knows that. And I, and and I depended, uh, you know, all the way. You know, um, it's not the color of the skin that's going to identify a person. 
Yeah. Every person, you know, uh, has the right to 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 be um, to be who they are and and be judged by what they are, not by any color or any religion or anything else. Right? And that's why we. Uh, this is the 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 best country in the world because of that. We should not be charging anybody by any any means. But with that being said, I think, uh, Steve, it's already um, screaming. <laughs> I think we over time. So, you guys, thank you again for, for the show today. It was a great show. And I hope I can see you guys back again next week. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.